Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? I just got done filming this week's podcast that'll be out on Friday, and I thought, let me use this time to actually walk through my podcast setup. I have a video on this channel all about how I record my video podcast, but a lot has changed. I've moved into a new studio, so I thought, let me just break things down step by step for you in hopefully a more simplified way. I also wanna talk at the end of the video about why I think it's so important to put your podcast on video if it's something that you're comfortable with or willing to take a risk on. So let's go. The question I get all the time is what microphone do I use? So this microphone is a Shure MV7. This is like specifically made for streamers and podcasters. I'll leave links for all my equipment down in the uh, description box as well. So be sure to check that out if you wanna shop. And I really like it. I'm really happy with it. Now I've used a lot of different microphones over the years. I used the Blue Yeti for a long time, which I did like. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Latasha and I'm a freelance social media manager and business coach. Weird thing is it broke. Like <laughs> I have never had a microphone just fall apart. It, it actually fell apart on me. So I don't know. I have a lot of friends who use that microphone and really like it. I think I got like a bad one, maybe it was like a fake one, I don't know, but that one didn't work so well for me. Then I used the Samson Q2U for a long time and I really, really like that microphone. I still really like it. Overwhelmingly, I got responses about scaling, about growing your business bigger than just yourself, about hiring a team, knowing when it's time to do that, and really crushing some of those huge goals. I think it's a really great one to start with if you are on a budget. I don't know, it's not like the prettiest looking microphone, but it's really affordable. I think it's like $70 or something. Now, here's the confusing part about a video podcast. People are always like, wait, but you're recording on a camera, right? You're not recording on a webcam. So the camera I'm using is a Canon 80D and I am using a Sigma art lens. It's a, I can never remember the numbers on it, but I'll, I'll put it you know, on the screen or whatever. I've been using this same camera setup for the past few years, so nothing has really changed. I like the Canon 80D. I like this art lens in particular because it really helps with the autofocus. It makes it really, really fast. You know, uh, some of my other cameras that I have have really slow autofocus or just really poor autofocus. That's also how I get the depth of field. People ask about that. Why does my background look blurry? It's because basically the lower f-stop can go on your lens, the blurrier your background can get. So I think the one on my lens is like 1.7. So that means it's pretty blurry behind me. If it was like a 2.5, the background would look a little bit more real and less blurry. You can also mimic this effect somewhat just by sitting up closer to the camera. So like you know, the closer I'm getting to the camera, the blurrier my background is getting in theory. So you can also kind of replicate that if you don't have a big fancy lens, just sit closer, sit further and see what works for you. Okay, so how does the audio connect to the video? That's like the number one question. So it doesn't, <laughs> I'm recording two separate files. So I set up my camera, I put an SD card in the camera. I set up my microphone. I connect it to, this is a new piece of equipment for me, the Rodecaster, which is a mixer basically. It's like a mixer, a sound studio. They market it as a lot of things, but in short, it's a mixer, which basically means that I can have, I think up to four, or maybe it's just two. I don't know, a couple of different audio inputs in here. I use this when I did my interview with my friend Ryan. If you watch that one, he was actually here in my home recording. So. I used Norris, he also has the same microphone. So I used his microphone for Ryan and then we connected it to this mixer and then both of our audio tracks would record at the same time. But when I'm just recording for myself, I use it as well. I just obviously just have one audio input going in. The benefit of using something like this is it records the audio on an SD card, a micro SD card. So I don't need to worry about running any programs on my computer. Prior to this, I was using Descript or I'd just record into QuickTime or Final Cut or whatever, but sometimes those programs can crash or it's just the audio quality isn't as good either when you're using a USB versus an XLR cable, which is what this is right here. And it's also cool because there's like, I can play around with the audio levels. So sometimes I feel like this microphone records really quiet. I can raise it up. Um, if I'm talking with somebody who talks louder than me, I can make sure we're like on the same level. They're not screaming. I'm not whispering. Uh, there's also little fun, like audio things you can load up in here. So if I had like a theme song or something for the podcast, I could load that in here and then just press a button and it would automatically play. It does the same thing. Like I'll do one right now, like for a pause. We've got a rim shot here. Oh no, that's chimes. Rim shot. Oh, my favorite. 
guard your ears, air horn. Yeah, so you can do fun things like that as well. So what I do then, after I have both of those, I have the SD card for the video, the, the micro SD for the audio, is I just put them into my computer, take the files off of the SD cards, and then I load them up into my video editor, which I use Final Cut Pro. I really like Final Cut Pro. I've been using it for a long time, works well for me. They have a feature called Sync Audio. So you, I'll, I'll show you, but basically I connect the clips using that sync audio feature and boom, there you go. Now I replace the audio of my video with the audio from my microphone in the roadcaster and it sounds really nice. Yeah, that's how I combine the audio and video. Really quick, a couple other things about my setup. I primarily use natural light nowadays. That's one of the big reasons I wanted a new studio. My old studio, I had to use a very intricate lighting setup. It was a three point lighting setup with a ring light, really bright on my face. I had a backlight behind me and I had one to the side. I kind of have the same thing going on now, but it's mostly guided by this big, large window in front of me. I have a ring light to my right, like, at a diangle, di diangle, <laughs> diagonal. It's like kind of off of my right eye. I have a ring light on, it is very, very low. I don't like how it looks when it's too bright. So I keep it on very, very low just to kind of help fill up. You see though, that this side of my face does have a little bit of shadow and I like that, you know, we are used to seeing people's faces with a bit of shadow. Like we're not used to seeing everybody's faces completely evenly lit. So, um, I like a little bit of shadow, so I don't keep this on too bright. And then I do have a lamp over here that I do keep on as well, just to help light up a little bit of that side. But mostly it's just this big window. I don't love how they look like aesthetically, but I got shears, like sheer curtains. I also have a blackout blind that I can pull down if I need to. But day to day, I just keep these shears closed. I honestly got these at Walmart. They were like $10. <laughs> I might get like a prettier option eventually. But the benefit of using shears is that they diffuse the light. So it is really harsh light right now. If I were to just open them up, it wouldn't be an a good look on my face. Like it would make everything look very, very harsh, me look very orange. So having this little bit of diffusion really, really helps make the light look a little bit softer. Uh, so that's why I use those. And then behind me for my set, I also just have some lights back in the background. Um, they don't really help with lighting the shot, but just having these LEDs, I think kind of helps bring the set to life a little bit. So that's something that you can consider doing for your podcast set. I know a lot of podcasters like LEDs, but even just like shiny things like my YouTube plaque over here or, you know, a white, my, that's my college <laughs> diploma. Like I didn't know what to do with them. Like, I guess. Um, stuff like that can kind of help liven up the shot a little bit and just bring it a little bit more to life. So that's really all that goes into my YouTube set. Honestly, it's kind of simple. So you got your microphone, you've got your camera, you've got something to record into, and then your lighting and, and that's it. There you go. So, um, I want to talk really quick about why I think it's important to record your podcast on video. If you're interested, no pressure, of course, you know, I'm not about that life, do whatever makes you happy, but I'm really happy that I started putting my podcast on YouTube. I was nervous about it for some reason. I was like, are people going to like this format? I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, but people liked it and or just got used to it. You know, I was also very self-conscious about having a microphone in the shot. Like why? I don't, I don't know. And actually nowadays when people see my channel, I've, I've had people say this multiple times, like, wow, I love your audio on your YouTube videos. That's one of the first things people mentioned to me, which makes me really happy. So I think whatever, don't be self-conscious about it. I'm really happy I did it because it has grown the podcast and my YouTube channel so incredibly much. Before I started putting my podcast on YouTube, I was getting like 500 listens about something like that. Like it was pretty low, grateful. Hashtag grateful, but it wasn't a lot. And then, you know, after a year, that number had doubled. And after two years of doing it on YouTube, it had like quadrupled. And, and something I was worried about is that people would stop listening on Apple and Spotify and they would only watch on YouTube. But I found it just hasn't happened. Like they've both grown together. And I actually get comments all the time saying, I listen to all of your podcast episodes twice. I listen once in the car and then I go home and I watch it, which I'm like, thank you. And I know that's just anecdotal. I know that's not everybody doing that, but you know, if people really like it, if it's really good content, they will do that or they'll bounce in between depending on 
you know, what's most convenient for them at the time. So it really helps with discoverability. Letting people find you or getting people to find your podcast on the podcasting platforms, I found is a really hard thing. It's not super searchable like YouTube is. You know, YouTube is the second biggest search engine. There's also been rumblings over the past year, you know, past couple years, I guess, but specifically in this past year, as we all know, TikTok is, you know, doing what TikTok is doing. And I think YouTube is kind of trying to figure out where they live, like what space they own. And I'm not a YouTube representative. These are all just rumors I'm reading on the internet. But what it seems like they're realizing is that they are the home for video podcasts. They might not be able to compete with TikTok with short form, although they're trying, but they definitely are absolutely the owners of the video podcast space. So I think they're really trying to encourage people to do it. I've heard that they were incentivizing people. I, I don't know. This was an old article. I'll see if I can find it and put it up on the screen or in the um, links down below. But I also just found one that said this was some research that came out at Podcast Movement, a conference about podcasting. The morning consult survey finds about a third of adults overall say YouTube is their preferred platform for podcast listening that puts it well ahead of both Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So again, I think YouTube owns this space and I think YouTube is kind of rewarding it. When I go onto my YouTube right now, all I see are podcasts. Again, that's anecdotal. That's probably because I watch a lot of podcasts and, you know, algorithm, things like that. But a lot of the podcasts that are being recommended to me are very small. They're not like celebrity podcasts or any podcasts I know. They're like, you know, accounts with a thousand followers and things like that. So I think there's a lot of opportunity in the YouTube space to build yourself up. Um, as a podcaster right now. If you're not comfortable being on camera or if you're like, Latasha, this seems way extra for me. It kind of is. Keep in mind, I've been doing this for a long time. So I'm, like I said, there are, you know, you don't need to use a mixer. You don't need to use whatever, all these fancy lenses and stuff like that. Start with what you have. If you are gonna record a podcast, set your phone up. One of my friends, Shelby, um, shout out to you, Shelby. She's a poet and she just started her podcast. She's actually recording it just on her iPhone. And I was like, oh my gosh, it looks like pretty good. It's an additional placement for her podcast. Or you don't have to have this, you know, amazing, perfect camera to just get started. Just get started. You could also go even more lo-fi from that and just rip your audio and put it up. Like uh, one of my favorite podcasts, some of you know this about me, some of you don't, but my favorite show on earth is The View, ABC's The View. It is my dream to get on that show. If anybody has any connections, let me know what I need to do. It's my dream. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I don't watch it that much anymore. I watch like once a week. But anyway, um, there is a podcast called My View on the View. It is very niche. It is just this woman recapping, giving little like gossip about the show. And I don't listen to that every day either. But she has built a really good podcast for herself on YouTube and she does not show her face. She just does like a little waveform or something and like pictures of the women on the show. Like it's super lo-fi. So again, I recommend you just consider doing that, adding it as a placement, if nothing else. I think there is a lot of opportunity for discovery and you know, for like algorithmic love from YouTube. So anyway, if you have any questions about my podcast setup or about YouTube podcasting or YouTube in general, let me know in the comments. I also do have a course if you're interested in checking it out, it's called the Video Lab. It's all about, you know, more in depth of like how all this camera stuff works, how to build a channel, learn about YouTube SEO, do storytelling, things like that. It's like way more in depth if you're interested, but like, just let me know in the comments if you have any questions too. I'm happy to answer and create more content about video as well. So hope this was helpful. If you have a video podcast, leave a link down below. I wanna check it out and thanks so much for watching. I'll be back on Friday with the actual podcast. See you then, bye.